So when we dug into the Microsoft documentation, we saw it talking about calling convention that it used with the shadow space. So let's learn more about calling conventions in general. First of all, there's sort of two sub-elements of importance in a calling convention. The first are the register conventions about which registers belong to the caller versus callee function. And the second is the parameter passing conventions of how a caller passes parameters to a callee and how the callee passes a return value back. It's important to know that calling conventions are always compiler dependent. So unless specifically some GCC compiler is trying to abide by a calling convention to work with Microsoft code, they will frequently generate mutually incompatible code. This was much more of a problem when there were many, many more compiler makers running around, but over time the number of compiler makers has decreased. In this class, we're only going to be talking about the Microsoft X64 ABI, which is used by the compiler behind Visual Studio, and the System 5 X64, X86-64 ABI, which is used by Unix-derived systems like Linux, BSDs, and also Mac OS. The links to the ABI documentation are given at the bottom of this page, and there's a lot of interesting bits and caveats and things that I'm just glossing over in this class, so I recommend you check out that documentation later. Okay, so the first sub-element of a calling convention, the register conventions, we have the caller saved registers. These are also called volatile registers by Microsoft because basically a caller, a function which is calling some other function, a caller should assume that they will be changed by the callee and therefore the caller is responsible for saving those registers before calling something so that it can restore them later on if it doesn't want to deal with the fact that they've been smashed by the callee. So the conventions for Visual Studio is that these registers are the caller save registers, RAX, RCX, RDX, etc. And for GCC, these are the registers. So these register lists only differ in terms of RDI and RSI. So GCC and other System 5 derived ABI using compilers will save the RDI and RSI in the caller. And so since Visual Studio doesn't, that kind of implies that instead those two registers are callee save registers. So the callee save registers, also called non-volatile registers, are something where the caller should assume they will not be changed by the callee, and if the callee is changing them, they're misbehaving and could lead to broken code. So these are registers that belong to the caller, and therefore the callee needs to save them and restore them so that it doesn't break anything in the caller. So again, the register list is given below, and it differs only in terms of RDI and RSI. And when it comes to saving registers, both the caller and the callee are responsible for balancing any register saves they perform where they're adding things to the stack with restores where they remove things from the stack. This, of course, earns a thumbs up from Thanos. The caller will typically, like most assembly code you're going to see generated by these compilers, it will typically save the registers, save the caller, save registers, right before a call, and then it will typically restore them right after a call. So, sort of a way to infer what's going on, if you see a bunch of register saves right before a call and you see a balanced register restore right after the call, that is the caller saving some caller save registers. And of course, you can double check against the list to make sure that they are caller save registers on the list that I gave previously. Similarly, typically a callee will save registers right at the beginning of the function and it's going to restore them right at the end of the function. So that again will be your hint that it's callee save registers that are being saved and restored if you see it at the beginning and balanced at the end of the function. So here's a visual representation of the different conventions in use. We said that all of the registers are the same except RDI and RSI. So if Visual Studio has these registers as caller save and these registers as callee save, well, it's the same for the System 5 derived things. RAX is caller saved, RCX is caller saved, RDX is caller saved, but they differ in terms of RSI and RDI. Now let's talk about the second sub-element of a calling convention, the parameter passing conventions. So both the System 5 ABI and the Visual Studio or Microsoft X64 ABI, these compilers use a subset of the caller save registers to pass parameters into and out of functions. 
The first one, RAX, both compilers use RAX as a caller save register. RAX is special in that it's always going to be passing back, passing out the return value. So if it's a 64-bit value or smaller, which is typically what you're going to see, then RAX is actually acting by convention as the return value. And so that's very common that you'll see things being moved into EAX, RAX, and so forth right before the return out of a function. That's holding a return value. It's a return value in the C sense of the word, and that when you have a function, it returns one return value. It can also be the case, like if you see this sometime and you're wondering what's up, it can be the case that a 128-bit value can be returned by using the concatenation of RDX for the top 64 bits and RAX for the bottom 64 bits. So that's the common elements of both of the compilers. Now let's see the differences. So in the Microsoft X64 ABI, the first four parameters, four parameters from left to right, are put into RCX, RDX, R8, R9, respectively. Now we already actually saw this in too many parameters. You would see the value of A going into RCX, B going to RDX, C going to R8, D going to R9. And then any parameters past that, E or if we add an FGH, et cetera, those parameters are pushed onto the stack. So the remaining parameters are pushed onto the stack for, so that the leftmost parameter is at the lowest address. So essentially it's, you know, it would basically be pushed in the reverse order, push, 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 and then this thing would be at the lowest address or just, you know, moving it onto the stack using move instructions, which is more typical. By contrast, the System 5 X6, X86-64 ABI has six parameters from the caller saved registers, which can be used for passing parameters. And the ordering is RDI, RSI, RDX, RCX, R8, R9. So in this quote unquote too many parameters, we actually don't have too many parameters for the X64, X86-64 ABI used on System 5 systems. It would basically be RDI, RSI, RDX, RCX, R8, and there would be yet another parameter just freely available to pass more stuff if necessary. But if you added two more arguments to this function, then this next one would be passed in R9, and the next one after that would be pushed onto the stack, notionally pushed onto the stack, practically speaking, frequently moved onto the stack. And so if we expand out that table from before, again, you know, everything's the same except RSI and RDI. We just expanded some of this R8 through R11 to make it so that it's more visible. That Visual Studio passes argument one in RCX, argument two in RDX, argument three in R8, argument four in R9. And then system five, you know, it just gotta be difficult here. Passing it sort of backwards from this visualization, Parameter 1 in RDI, 2 in RSI, 3 in RDX, 4 in RCX, and then jump over here to R8 gets parameter 5, R9 gets parameter 6. So I have no idea how they came up with this particular ordering. Maybe it was just to be different from Intel, different from Microsoft. I don't know. It doesn't make any more sense if we look at it in this sort of registers view of the world. The Visual Studio is 1, 2, 3, 4. Sure, great, makes sense. And the system five is one, two, up up here, backwards, three, four, up over here, downwards, five, six. So I don't know how they came up with that. If anyone knows and would like to enlighten me, let me know.